Hey guys, Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. I'm here in my dad's shed at the farm and we've got an old, um, well, it's a it's a created diamond tip cutting saw, which dad made actually, what did you say, 45 years ago? Yeah. Um, so that's a great contraption in its own and we're gonna use it to cut the tops off these bottles. Now, for those of you who don't know, these are called a cod bottle or a marble bottle. They've got a marble in them. This one's actually broken around the top so the marble will come out normally they won't and a lot of bottle collectors will well know that you dig them with the tops broken because the kids of the time collected the marbles so when we dig a bottle like this it's obviously not really of any value as a to a bottle collector but we're going to try and slice the top off and they're very thick glass on this diamond tip saw okay the uh we've got it clamped under a chain clamp there we've got it as square as we can and we should be able to take the round part of the top off and just leave the embossing so uh, we'll close the lid and we'll get things operational now the saw is is it a diamond tipped yeah. blade yes yeah. and it's cooled by do you have kerosene. kerosene now do you have that actually dripping no it runs in about quarter inch of water oh okay and just picks it up yep so the blade actually it up at the, top. the bottom of the blade actually dips into a kero bath at the bottom so there we have some action. I think you can see without the reflection there. Uh, no, that's all right. That's the fluoro over there, that, but that's okay. I can avoid that. There we go. And that shows the uh, Kero churning around at the bottom. So that just lubricates the cut and keeps it cool. Obviously, when you're cutting rocks, you have the same issue with fractures and heat. And in fact, before we start cutting, there's a, a rock here. What's this? Rhyolite, I think. Yes. And that's been cut through with this saw. Um, really makes a nice rock sample from something that doesn't look very special. Now the bottle or the object to be cut is drawn into the blade and we might get a bit of noise here, I don't know how loud it is. There we go, so it's a slow cut and the pressure is just from a weight. Okay, we had a fail on the first one. It either moved in the clamp or the glass had a fracture in it that we didn't see. But you can see how thick the glass is on these and you do have to feed them in very slowly. So we may have had a bit too much weight on the uh, the draw cord here. What is that weight? I don't know. Oh, is that like one of those golf practice weights where you tie your golf ball to it? And, no? I've seen those. Yeah. Not too small, yeah. Anyway, we'll try another bottle. Take two. Okay, we're take two. Hopefully this one works. I think that was a success and here's the top section that's cut really well geez how thick's that glass so now we've got a vase a drinking <laughs> glass something that's saleable anyway geez that's incredibly thick glass so we still see the elf bow trademark and Nagambi on the bottom, a nice personalised Nagambi. What do we say? Vase. Nice. Very good. All right, we'll see if the other one goes. You yep. You, you can run that. You can run around there with a the emery stone and take that sharp edge. Yeah, out. yeah. Bit of emery to clean it up. That looks really good. Geez, look, it's not even round in the middle. No, no. While we're in the shed, this is what happens when you let an eighty-three-year-old on YouTube. <laughs> Look what he's done here. Look what Dad's done. He's made a rot. It's a, a random screw hardware assortment rotisserie. Just with a bearing. There you go. That's really upcycling. Good job. 
This next one went well too, maybe on a slight angle. Dad was just saying you might get a block of timber with a V in it so they sit nice and square. But uh, they just need to clean up, clean up with some emery and they look really cool. So I'll take them back and wash them up at home and just use some uh, emery to take any sharp edges off. And unfortunately the cleanest one we had here uh, we probably should have saved till last. But anyway, I do get plenty of these and any of you that do collect bottles know that you get these cod bottles all the time with the tops knocked off and it's nice to be able to save part of the history. So I'll show you what they look like when I clean them up at home. And uh, I will do some more videos on bottles at some stage because I did a few earlier in my channel and I need to follow it up. We'll do a bit of history of these cod bottles and we'll touch on a few other of the collectible types. Okay, I'm home guys. It's been a couple of weeks since I started this video. Um, those of you that follow my channel will know that Christine took ill and we've had a few dramas there, but she's making a good recovery. I'm getting back to finishing off some of these videos and I've just been running a bit of emery around the sharp edges of the, the bottle here and you can see how uneven it is there. That's just amazing and very thick glass. So that's taken the sharp edges off. Uh, that's all I'm going to do. Look, you could probably polish that if you wanted to go to the trouble, but I just wanted to make it smooth. They cleaned up, they washed up pretty good. Uh, this one's uh, an English-made variety. Some of these were made in Australia. And, uh, all right, whoops, there goes the marble. We don't need the marble, of course, anymore. It's now either a drinking glass or a vase. Probably better as a vase. Uh, it's nice and heavy. It's nice and stable. Uh, to drink, you wouldn't get much fluid in there. It'd be... I think they were a 13 ounce and obviously the fluid would have got a bit higher so it's probably only 10 ounce. Uh, but anyway, that's a great piece from what was uh, originally discarded and thrown away and then of course if they're complete they're quite collectible and quite valuable but then broken, they're of no value to collectors generally. But now we've got a nice piece of local history in a form that can be used and appreciated so it's got another life yet again even after being damaged it's got another life so i'm pretty happy with that unfortunately this other one had a bit of a fracture through it now you may have noticed it in the earlier video i didn't see it but uh, now that i've been cleaning it up a little bit a bit of a fracture there i think it's still okay and this one is a little bit off center the uh the clamp didn't quite hold it at right angles to the blade so next time i'm home at, at mum and dad's place we might, I'll take a few more of these. We'll set up a, a timber block with a V in it so they'll sit nice and square to the blade. They shouldn't move. And we'll have to be very careful with the weighting just so that it doesn't generate too much heat as it cuts through. I think the first one fractured because it was just a bit too much pressure. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, a little bit of a different video, but we have produced an item that I can sell and preserved a bit of history and kept something out of landfill. Now these cod bottles or marble bottles or alley bottles, uh, these Nagambi ones, there's a few different varieties. Uh, this one's probably about a hundred dollar bottle in good condition. Um, broken, very little value, unless it's one that you haven't got and it's just a shelfie until you get a better one. But like this, it's going to have a bit of interest to uh, any, any locals that want to preserve a little bit of history. It's quite functional, as I said before, and I will probably put $20 on that in the shop, and I reckon we'll get 20 bucks for it. So next time I go back to see my folks, I'll round up a whole box of these, and we should be able to hopefully cut them without too many breakages and put some history back into circulation. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.